Following the call by the Minister of Education to VCs, provosts and rectors of tertiary education institutions to recommence their academic session online. The sessions, which was disrupted as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has kicked against the decision, saying there are challenges involved in the implementation of the ministerial directive. The union accused the minister of engaging in political gimmickry and not being fully informed of the situation in the sector over which he presides. In a message issued by ASU UI Publicity Committee, it stated 16 concerns of the union, one of which was that the minister needs to understand that e-learning is not the same as computer vending and supplies. It is not as simple as computerization, supplying of computers and accessories, or simply connecting institutions to the internet. We're being joined by Chinenye Mba Uzuku, managing partner at Grand Central. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, just before we went off on that break, I was asking you about ASU's reaction. Is the minister truly not in sync or understand fully the situation in the sector which he presides as ASU is alleging? I think the, uh, well, I, I actually would have preferred to have read the minister's statement to be crystal clear about what he said. Um, but taking on his face value, I don't think that he is incorrect to the extent that there are some universities in Nigeria, such as ABU, um, Unilag, that are actually running uh, distance learning programs that are full BSc and MSc programs. Um, I think UNN is also running a similar program. But does it cover the generality of all Nigerian students? Probably not. And uh, the question that Asu didn't answer in what I read was what should be done. So it's one thing to criticize, and it's another to, um, to say what exactly should be the remedy. Clearly, the students can't come to school. I would have thought that ASU would address itself to what can be done rather than, than, uh, than take the position that they've taken, which is essentially just negative. No, you shut the door, then what? Okay, I, um, I, was, I was going to ask, you just highlighted two institutions um, that has the uh, e-learning uh, facility. Is that enough, considering the multiplicity of higher institutions and universities, um, secondary schools that we have in the country? How many really are connected to the internet? And how will this work, especially with the fact that we have a pandemic on our hands? Well, I think the last point that you've made is the most important one. You know, when, when you're in a pandemic, you are in the equivalent of a war, war to war. So you're fighting an unseen enemy. You have no idea where this enemy is coming from. And that's the big difference between a typical war um, and, and a pandemic. Clearly, we're in an emergency situation. And clearly, not everyone will be uh, will be able to cope with it to the same, same degree. So there will be an impact on the educational system. There is already, even in places like Lagos, where there's, uh, where there's a lot of connectivity, people are still struggling with the issues of how do we get our children to go to school. So yeah, the, the, the truth is that, yes, you cannot. I mean, there, think about it. There, there are about 1.7 million students in Nigerian universities, 120 something of them, I think. Um, scattered across the entire country in 36 states of the Federation, but it's still the number is 1.7 million. That's less than the number of students that go to school every single day in, in Lagos, in a single state like Lagos. So you, you need to ask yourself, you know, if Lagos is trying to cope with it and is coming up with solutions, what then should be the role of our universities? I find it a little bit, um, a little bit of, uh, you know, to, to me, oftentimes I, I, I think of us who like, you know, because I grew up in the university environment, and ASU to me is, is increasingly like, you know, like, you know, that uncle that you have who is uh, fun while you're young, but when you get older, he becomes a little bit tiresome. That's kind of like what, what, what ASU is like to me, uh, because you, they, they, you, they don't seem to ever want to face the reality. Are you yeah, discrediting to to... most of what they're saying? Like, for instance, that there is no Nigerian university today that is operating any form or model of e-learning well, because of poor internet uh, uh, facilities. Uh, you do agree that, that to, to that get... Okay, that, go that, ahead. That, that, that's not correct. Can, that cannot be correct because there are licensed universities that have already been licensed for this to, to provide um, uh, um, programs. Not all the programs, but there are universities that are running that. I know that Unilag does. I know that the University of Nigeria does. And I know that uh, ABU does. And these are not, you know, what they would call uh, mushroom or glorified secondary schools as I saw in their press release. These are amongst the first uh, the first set of universities in Nigeria. 
and they have matured to that. There, there are challenges to the system, there is no doubt. Uh, but to say categorically that there is none, I really don't understand that. I just can't understand it. It literally just negates all the efforts that have been made uh, made so far. Um, and it's and as far as I'm concerned, it's more of ad ad, ad hominem. If you if you if you, if you ignore the issue and you focus on the person, then you are you are really not addressing it. And I I think we can we can go in depth into some of the issues that they've raised, and you will find that yes, it is to some extent true. Um, but but think about it this way. I, I, I run technology. I've worked in universities uh, um, to provide technology. I have seen kind of like the challenges that they have firsthand. I've also worked in secondary schools and in primary schools across the entire country. The first thing in a university is the university system is not the internet. It's local connectivity. At least 80% of the work that is done within the university is done by, by way of, of, of teaching and learning is done local to the university. It does not require the internet. You simply have to have connectivity within the university campus and local servers from which you can, where you can actually put your material and connect to that material and use it. Yes, there is a requirement for the internet, but it's not a 100% requirement. Clearly, universities are running um, um, e-learning in, in off-internet environments. So, so what I, is the story? Am I getting from I, I, I what just... you are saying that ASU has it completely wrong? And that the minister um, is not talking balderdash when he says that we can do e-learning at this time. I think the minister, if, if the minister, I wish, like I said, that I had seen the minister's statement. You know, there, there are levels of, of uh, they're, they're never, it's not really black and white. When these statements are made, uh, they're, they're rehashed in, in, sometimes in the, in the media or they're pushed through social media, we end up with a mixed message. Here is the story, and I think, which, I, which I think is pretty clear. There is no way that 100% of the students in our universities today will be able to access e-learning. That's a fact, not under the circumstances that we currently have. Even if there was no COVID, there are very real issues around connectivity. My point is that the, the idea that you would say zero is completely wrong. Unless ASU, in his wisdom, has considered the, the, these universities that I've mentioned as not being universities, or the programs that they're running as not being um, programs that, that, that should be run. Um, right. They gave an example of, of, um, of the National Open University, and it disparaged the National Open University from which people have graduated and, and are working. And I've even hired people working who came out of National Open University in my own organization. So I, I, I think it's, a, it's an attempt, it's more of a political statement than it is a factual statement coming from intellectuals. They right. ought to really sit down and join the fight to say, okay, well, what can we do under the circumstances? Genial, yes, they have I issues. There are, there are issues around I must interject. Um, thank you very much. We do need to get to um, other stories and other guests at the moment, but we do appreciate your thoughts and your time on the news. Thank you very much for having me. All right, thank you. Uh, we have still on the same subject. We're going to connect with Professor Emmanuel Akintayo. Uh, he's calling in from Equity State. Uh, thank you, Professor, for joining us on the news. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to you. All right, I, I don't know if you heard a lot about what uh, Chidenye said. Did you hear? Yeah. It's, uh, well, yeah. Thank you very much. When we properly understand what the e-learning and things, then we will be able to appreciate the fact that the directive of the minister is not realistic, given the preparedness of Nigerian universities. You see, e-learning is not the same thing as use of line, some computers to some universities, or providing intermittent internet to some universities. E-learning is a learning system that is facilitated using the learning like computers, smartphones, or digital devices, and that is transmitted via internet. It is not a one-time event like presenting PowerPoint slides or viewing a recorded webcast. Rather, it's an interactive learning going on between the instructor and the learner, whereby the teacher as factored in the interest and behavior of the learner in preparing relevant activities and materials that will optimize the learner's experience and in a way that the teacher can easily follow the progress of the learner using some methods. So the content of what we want to teach will dictate the type of platform that we are going to deploy. 
For example, if you are interested in generating uh, return costs, then you can deploy using what we call the MOOC, which is massive open online course uh, system. Okay. No, it, yeah. Go so, ahead. Finish your thoughts. Finish your thoughts. Yeah. Hello. Okay, I, I was going to say finish your thought, but let's move on to something else. I look for uh, more of a uh, solution um, to this uh, situation. Um, what, with what Asu has highlighted, what should we be looking at um, at this time to try and make learning happen? Because, yes, we have a pandemic, but we still need to consider our future expectedly. So what what suggestions are you going to put forward that will help the process so that students and pupils at home can actually learn, even those that don't have access to the internet? Um, well, 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 you know, to, to, to make online uh, learning easy, you, you need a lot of uh, infrastructure. But number one, is that both the university and the learner, I mean, the, the facilitators, must have seamless access, I mean, access to seamless internet. So that's, that's not there on both sides. Ah, that's number one. Then you must also have reliable electricity supply at both ends uh -huh, to make these things possible. You know, you see, online uh, learning that we are saying, I'll give you an illustration. There was an, a time that the federal government uh, distributed smart, smart bus, interactive bus to some universities. But because they don't have sustainable internet and electricity supply, you know, to make this thing function, the smart interactive bus will come to Maca bus. So if universities cannot simply use smart interactive bus, we are not asking them to do online teaching. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's funny. So the internet must be available, electricity must be available. Then online learning also depends on very well-stocked, effective libraries. So that the most the libraries of the university must have up to date online resources, uh, that are, and must also have seamless access to internet. Aha. So all these things are very, very important. Okay, you mentioned so a number of, you, you mentioned, planning. Prof, you mentioned a number of things already. What would be one that you will say should be an immediate priority post-COVID-19? Uh, well, the, 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 immediate, the immediate priority now would be maybe for, some, for the universities to start developing what you call their own massive own open online courses. They have to develop them. That will be the immediate thing. So, because we have our own content that is regulated by the AUC, we cannot just log into the MOOC of Harvard or the MOOC of Cambridge because we have our own content that is regulated by the AUC. So each university must develop its own MOOC. That's the immediate thing now. And if that is done, I don't know how, how, how fast that will be done. If that is done, then there must be internet to communicate this thing to the students. The students must also have access to seamless internet because we are talking of deploying motion graphics. You know, you want to do video streaming and so many things. So they need fast internet. Aha. So these are the things that must be put in place before even in the midst of the problem. And, and that right. tells you a lot that all these fire brigade approach is not what we need in Nigeria. We have to plan ahead and all move right. with the world. All right, it's Professor because Ivano. of COVID now that you are talking of e-learning. But this is something that we should have been taking for a long time. All right, Professor. Thank you very much for your thoughts on the news. Thank you.